Mr. Gilles Minister of Mobility of Belgium, thank you for having us in your office here in Brussels. It was a great pleasure, it was an honor. Um, unfortunately, you could not make it at the conference, Realtech Belgium. However, we are here today uh, to talk to you and still hear what you have uh, to say to the Belgium as well as the international real sector. So thank you for having us. Um, first of all, why is Belgium the right location for an international real conference? because it's a very nice country, uh, because it's capital of Europe, and because our federal government has a uh, very uh, big and positive intention for, for, for the train, for, for, for the track. We want to make the train the backbone of the mobility of the future. It's uh, the best way to make uh, mobility a freedom for, for people and to go uh, for further for our climate ambition. Yes, and... Uh, the quote of your website is as well, to make the train the, the backbone of tomorrow's mobility, we must now reinvest in railways um, for the first time in a long time. Um, how is Belgium now investing in rail? We are investing money, but we have uh, also uh, uh, ambition. We want, uh, as I said, to make the, to make the, the train the backbone of uh, mobility, we want more people, more goods on train, and we decided with uh, uh, our government since uh, three years to reinvest, reinvested the, the for, for, for the train in the infrastructure and in, in the service for, for people. For the first time in 10 years, we have a contract, a PSO contract with our train companies, and uh, we set them. Uh, uh, more ambitions for, for the, the future, a better service, uh, more accessibility to, to people, and uh, we decided to invest in uh, accessibility, in punctuality, uh, in digitalization, in security, and it's a very positive story because uh, one euro invested in the train uh, brings uh, two, three euros back to, to the economy. Okay, that's a good figure indeed. And um, indeed, one of the goals in, in the real vision for 2040 that you, um, that you set up, and uh, the aim is to go for real modal shift to rail from, from roads, from perhaps also uh, flying. And um, yeah, the goal is to go for passenger rail to 15%, while it's now at, at 8%, and for freight um, from 12 to 20%, yeah. um, which is, of course, uh, Perhaps ambitious, but it's uh, also necessary, uh, I suppose. Yeah. And how um, can these goals be achieved? We want uh, to double the modal part of, of train, and uh, therefore we have to be more efficient. We have to renew uh, our rolling material. We will do so uh, for uh, the help of the rolling material in the 10 years. We have to uh, uh, invest in, in the tracks so that we can uh, uh, be able to make uh, uh, right and train for passenger and train for, for, for goods. Uh, we have to have a better coordination between uh, uh, all modes of transport with our regional buses, also uh, with uh, uh, people who are uh, active on their bike or going by, 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 by foot and uh, we need also uh, a better service with train earlier in the morning, uh, later in the evening uh, so that you can be as free as uh, you take the, the train as you uh, have a, a, a car which is a, a part of the, the problem we have to, to, to solve, the climate problem, the uh, problem of uh, too many cars in, in cities like, like, like Brussels. Yes, and from when can some of these um, improvements be expected? What are, are there any sub-goals? Yes, it takes always too much time in, in, the, in the train because w once you decide it takes uh, two, three or four years to, to see the, 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 the change in, uh, in the mobility. But we decided to to find to think uh, long term. We, we uh, wrote uh, a vision, a vision 24, wha what we want to achieve 
in 20 years, we decide to, to give for the first time a 10 years contract, a 10, 10 years PSO contract to our, to our company so that they can uh, see well the what they have to achieve and uh, make the, the rightest and the most efficient choice uh, to uh, respond to uh, the demand of uh, their government. Yes, and, and what is for Belgium the biggest challenge to, to reach these goals? Uh, there are many challenges. Uh, we have to be more efficient uh, because uh, we want more train on, 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 on the tracks. We have to develop a better coordination of the train. The, the, there is uh, uh, the challenge of human resources. You, we have to attract uh, workers to, to, the to, the, to the train. We, we need each hour more than 2,000 more people uh, in our train companies. not always easy to find uh, the people. We need investment uh, to make our station uh, more accessible to uh, renew uh, our uh, whirling, uh, whirling stocks and we need also better coordination uh, uh, so that it will be more easy for, for, for people to take the train and more easy for companies to put uh, goods on train. Yeah, and do you think the, the necessary in investments also to reach those goals um, are now made? Uh, they are decided for the 10 coming years and I hope uh, that the, the further government will uh, respect the contract we did sign uh, with, with our train companies. It's billions of uh, investment that are uh, ready now to be, uh, to be, make, to be made uh, in, in the train sector. There are a lot of uh, companies, industries, people waiting for, for the results of uh, this uh, uh, very good decision for the future of mobility and I'm ready to, to make it a, a reality. That's great. And um, Belgium also recently, yeah, you could say made headlines with uh, the measure um, for night train operators that they do not um, pay the track exit charges as well as the energy fees in the coming two years. Um, I also saw actually a picture of you on the, the first night train of to European Berlin, Sleeper, yeah. yes, to Berlin. Um, and uh, is there any chance, because of course this helps for the next two years, um, for night train operators it, it might be extended or what is the, the longer term? First of all, I'm very proud that uh, Belgium is the first country in Europe uh, making uh, night train free of charge for their, their uh, cost of past and uh, their cost of uh, energy. Uh, uh, we want to help uh, night trains to develop again and we want to make uh, Brussels a uh, hub for, for, for night train in, in the future because there are uh, a lot of demand of people who want to um, um, travel uh, in another way, more green way, uh, and it's a very uh, positive uh, way to build Europe uh, also. What for the future? I hope more private company will uh, propose night trains coming to, uh, to, to Brussels. There are several projects, it's difficult to, to find uh, the rolling material. Uh, we have to improve on ticketing uh, for, for, for people, but uh, I think it's a part of the future of mobility and uh, Belgium chose the way and I uh, gave my, uh, my law to my colleagues from uh, other countries and I hope other countries will, the, the, will take the same law as Belgium. Yes, and, and um, of course night trains are not the only international trains that could um, make people choose for rail. Uh, so why night trains in particular instead of international trains in general? Uh, yeah, because uh, it's a particular way to, to work. It's the coming back of the night train. Uh, it's more difficult for night trains company to, uh, to be a uh, break event. Uh, the return on investment is, is slower. You have uh, more cost for um, employment and then I, I think it's uh, a uh, very fair way to help those uh, little and uh, nice companies to, to develop again. 
Right. And um, is there any chance in that this measure um, will be extended or is it? I hope so. Uh, I ask the European Commission to hello country to, to make like Belgium to help uh, night train companies. And I uh, ask my colleagues uh, from uh, other countries to, to have the, the, the same system as Belgium. Uh, I want to create a level playing field for night train against the unfair concurrence of uh, planes and other means of transport uh, who are more polluting and uh, more problematic for, for the climate. Yes, and talking about uh, indeed international uh, trains, um, Belgium is one of the six countries in the EU that has still um, the VAT on, on train tickets. Yeah, uh, also, for example, the Netherlands and, and Germany, so it's not the only one, but um, and uh, as we most people know, uh, all international air travel, you do have to not have to pay any taxes. So is there, you were talking about level playing field, any plan um, to also remove this for train travel to encourage people um, to travel sustainably? Indeed, it's uh, something I'm asking and uh, I'll do to my government since uh, months and months. I hope uh, we can take this uh, decision and we have to give the, the signal that uh, it's positive for uh, the climate uh, to, to take a train. And then it's very lo logical to make the train uh, free of uh, VAT, uh, like in a lot of other countries in, in Europe. Uh, if you want to create a, a level playing field in favor of, of the train, you have to uh, act in that di direction and uh, to make the train cheaper. So do you have any uh, message for the people of uh, Realtek Belgium? I wish you a very uh, interesting uh, conference here in Brussels with uh, Rytek. Uh, I hope you will deal uh, a lot of very interesting ideas and help us in the future to make uh, the train the backbone of the mobility and I hope also you will uh, enjoy your stay uh, here in the nice city of Brussels, capital of Europe.